G'day folks. Uh, welcome to a nice little uh, Thursday afternoon project. Uh, I've got a pair of speakers here that a friend donated, one of my workmates. Uh, as you can see they've got a severe case of foam rot, in other words there is no foam left. Uh, I haven't looked for foam kits for them, I'm going to throw some cheaper $60 drivers in them to start with. Um, yeah, for use with amplifiers between 40 and 70 watts continuous. This is the original markings on it, but I'm going to uh, put something a bit more hefty in them. And they're unported boxes too, so they're going to sound pretty punchy. I don't have the front covers for them, they all broke apart, they were de too degraded. But yeah, you can see they've seen better days. So I'm going to pop those main 10 inch drivers out and replace them. The others are all um, the tweeter and the high, or high and mid, or whatever they are. I'd say that's tweeter, mid and sub or woofer. Uh, this is what I'm throwing in, they're $60 each from JCAR. Response brand 10 inch woofer, like an air core magnet by the looks of it. It's kind of an interesting design, you've got little ports through the uh, cone there. And yeah, badass. It's a fairly decent subwoofer. <laughs> I've put these in all kinds of things and they always sound pretty impressive so for a uh, for a cheapie, they sound pretty good. They're built well. They're solid. Nice design. They look good. <laughs> so that's basically what I'm doing tonight. Just stuffing speakers in boxes. Let's get the old ones out and have a look at what they are. Whether Avanti renamed their own or whether they're using drivers from another company. I'm curious as to what they have. Okay, so the dri old drivers are Pioneer, eight ohm very tiny magnet by comparison but obviously they would have worked they wouldn't have been as punchy but they would have sounded really good They're very stiff boxes stiffeners all through them lots of uh, deadening it's basically fiber insulation found that floating around inside it's a jacket from a uh, 10 microfarad 100 volt cap obviously got a little bit hot it's up in there there's a board with what look like crossover coils or something or filter coils and they've basically taken the same adhesive that they've used to glue the cabinet together and just gone squish and stuck it to the cabinet so I can't even get the thing out to service it like it's just completely glued on there so basically I'm gonna have to bypass that if there's any problems I'm gonna put this together and put a meter across it and see um, obviously it's been driven hard enough to cook the skin off that capacitor uh, yeah, so it could be interesting. I might just make my own. All I really need is, um, well, you can use caps to isolate the highs from the lows, but that's about it, really. Don't know, I'll see how it goes. But yeah, I've got to replace that one with that one. Oh, look at that. I can pull the uh, retainer ring off, the adhesive's all gone to mush. So the uh, cone retainer and dress ring came straight off and it lines up with four of the holes on here. So I can hard fix the frame of the speaker with four there and then drive screws all the way through and keep the dress ring on as well so it all looks the same, just with a different cone. Awesome. These are going to come up nice. But as for the board in there, I'm not too sure. I might even take this out and see if I can get a closer look at it. It's definitely been driven hard if that cap's shed its skin. <laughs> Considering it's inside a speaker, not inside an amp or anything, it's been receiving some very uh, high-powered uh, signal. Very nice. A good cabinet though. It's MDF. Particle warp. Particle board. It's not the most solid of things to screw into, but given the extra screws that I've got, it should hold. Might even put a few little pads of um, silicon or something on there just in case. Yeah. Now, we'll find the weaknesses in this design with some big, bigger drivers. They'll be a stout, punchy little system. The bigger the cabinet I find, the deeper or the dronier they get. But you keep the cabinet really small and unported and you get some real nice punch to it. So, I'll try this on a few different amps and just see which one drives them the best and allocate that as the amp to drive those two. And possibly a, a pair of uh, smaller satellite speakers. Because is, These are going in the bedroom by the way, these aren't coming out here. I've already got good enough speakers out here to drive the neighbourhood nuts. Uh, these are going in the bedroom. And they're going to be driven with a uh, 
pair of amplifiers. I've got a Monarch, I think it's a German made amplifier, a Monarch 1055 I think it is. I can't remember, I found bugger all info on it. It's got four TO2 transistors in it. It's very old, but it sounds awesome. It drives um, two ported, ported 12 inch woofers and tweeters very well. So it's going to be paired up with a Marantz 5.1 stereo surround sound receiver and possibly more. I would like an Onkyo uh, 480 watt 5.1 receiver that a friend's got for sale but uh, it's going to cost me a little bit which isn't bad considering they're worth a couple of grand brand new. Uh, but that'll be on the future list once well, I guess I'll just keep working Fridays and after a couple of Fridays worth of work well there's a receiver. <laughs> So yeah, it's the best time of year to do it, busy season, get some more hours in at work and buy some more goodies for the quiet season to play with. Yeah, audio. The audio bug has bitten me bad. <laughs> okay, done a little bit of modding. Just trim that excess foam down, that's sort of for mounting face first into a box. So I've trimmed it down enough that this ring will compress what's left and hold the driver in. And that's it done. You can't actually pull it off because that is retaining the cone, it's all glued to the frame as one piece. So very careful control and just a very steady hand and just run a uh, blade around it bit at a time and uh, yeah, it came off without incident. But yeah one nick or cut in this rubber or foam surround and the driver is pretty much trash so only do it if you're very good with a blade essentially and a good steady hand or two actually, I used two, I braced against the frame and used both hands to carefully manipulate it one layer at a time deeper and deeper until it just came off in chunks so yeah that can go on there it looked fairly uh, uniform, a bit more original looking with the uh, blue surround, the trim on it very good, very good Igor, very good okay well that one's done the trim's purely cosmetic. I had to carefully drive some longer screws in with adhesive on them, just wood glue. Uh, the manufacturer did that with the original screws and when you take them out it pulls most of the material out with it, the MDF. So there isn't a lot of thread and a lot of grab in there. So that rings firmly in place. If it does vibrate I'll probably um, put a bead of silicon around the back of it and stick it on. Um, not so much that I can't just peel it off later if I have to pull the driver out, which I probably will if I have problems with that little glued on board. Uh, I'll probably even, uh, if anyone's got any suggestions on replacing it with something, uh, let me know. I'd be happy to uh, pull it back out and uh, just bypass the thing. There's no way I can get the thing off without demolishing it, so there's no user serviceable parts as, as such. But we'll see how it goes, I'll put the meter across it, see what it reads and uh, yeah, the cabinets are a little bit rough but actually in pretty good condition considering they were outside for a little while and or friend, at my friend's place anyway but moisture hasn't wrecked them like they did the uh, twin 12 inch cabinets they just fell apart <laughs> a bit of power, a bit of base and they just fell to pieces uh, yeah let's move on to the next one, I'm just going to do the exact same thing and then we'll plug it in and do a test there we have it. Beautiful. They'll sit nicely in the corners of my bedroom. <laughs> They're very nice boxes, I'll give them that much. The drivers, pretty standard looking pioneer stuff, but the uh, boxes, real cool. I like the uh, wood grain trim that they put on them. I think it's plastic. Yeah, it's a plastic veneer. It's not actually uh, wood veneer, but it's uh, very nice. I like it. Definitely not going to put the um, black felt stuff back over the front of so them. Those don't exist anymore. They basically fell apart or were broken when I got them. But yeah, they'll sit just like that, just nicely. And the old drivers, well, I might have to bolt them together and uh, give them some 50 hertz AC treatment. <laughs> Finish them off in style. Gee, being a standard Pioneer speaker, they're not worth rebuilding. If they were something really high end, I'd consider buying a foam kit, but not for something like this. No way. So they'll get a grand send off and I'll also pop the magnets off and keep them. I keep forgetting to keep speaker magnets. I'm always harvesting hard drive and magnetron magnets, but it's been, been years since I've had any speaker magnets kicking around. 
and given I've thrown out about six or eight old speakers recently I should have been bloody pulling the magnets off them yeah anyway thanks for watching and stay tuned for more I'm not going to test them just yet uh, that'll come up a bit later and either way I can't play much audio anyway without getting copyright strikes <laughs> fun